you in any way traveling seeing the world living in different places it's it's hard to say um, without knowing what I would be like without traveling I can't quantify any actual difference it's, it's I, I can play the what-if game um, and what if other you know you see other people who have not traveled do you find yourself being more open accepting than them no, not not more open or accepting. Um, although I don't hang out with people that generally aren't, so I, I wouldn't know. Um, but I, I think that I, I've learned a little bit about cultures that I probably wouldn't have learned about because they're little nuances as opposed to uh, major things that that you might see in a um, in a, in a news report or. Uh, some some other place you know if you don't um, because I traveled and, and and I did more than just you know go to some place for a week uh, because of the travel that I've done um, I, I got a better feel for the different cultures and I probably wouldn't have known that there was any Dutch resentment for the the groups that are refusing to assimilate or even that there was a requirement um, to assimilate uh, without having gone there. I, I just, I wouldn't have known. Um, I, I probably wouldn't have known that, that a lot of people in Western Europe are upset at people in Eastern Europe for taking jobs, or at least what seemed to me to be an awful lot of people. Um, it, it seemed to be the predominant opinion at the time I was there. Um, just because I've never seen that reported here, um, so that's something that I, I wouldn't have been able to observe. Um, you know, now I'm hearing on the news a little bit about the anti-Semitism and stuff going on in Europe, so that type of stuff, okay, you'd hear about, but, you know, I, I actually saw signs in Ireland directing uh, Polish people, specifically Polish people, to walk into the canals um, because they didn't want them there. They, they were, and the, the verbalized anger that I heard was because they were willing to work for less money to do the same job. That was the entire complaint. Um, they'll work for less money so the employer will hire them and, and save a little bit of money. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff's happened since, since I lived in Ireland. Um, their, their economy is, has changed dramatically since I lived there. So I don't know what the current sentiment is, but at the time that that was that was the issue and it, it seems that there are several places in Europe that they don't want the foreigners there um, I, I don't know that I would have heard about the Italians kicking out the Roma um, the the gypsies from uh, I think they were in North Italy or something um, if I hadn't been over there because that was more local news um, than being here and we get stupid news anyway so yeah, whatever um, so yeah traveling has helped some uh, I, I, when I went to Russia uh, I think I understood a little bit better about the, the Chechen struggle and you know I mean the whole thing started out not religious based it's, it, 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 the, the first Chechen war was not what I was taught in school about the Chechen struggle because the the school focused on the causes of the second one and the motivations of the second one but made it sound like both of them were kind of the same thing and what did you find what was the reason in the first one? Um, well the, the first one wasn't religious based but the motivations of the second one was it, it, it became much more kind of partisan that way um, where it, it, it was a more of a Muslim independence movement and there were only a few years that separated the two. Um, but the, uh, the, the first one it, it, was, it was really just about freedom and they didn't engage in all of the uh, they didn't engage in the bombings the same way they didn't you know and the interesting thing is, is even though they were blamed with it with a major bombing, which I believe this, I think this was the bombing that started the second uh, war, and and um, it was military detonators and military explosives 
in a building. It's believed that it was a uh, FSB activity at a time when Putin ran the FSB. And there, there, anyone who has researched this, like uh, Alexander Litvinenko, uh, who, who died of uh, polonium poisoning, um, believed to be by the Russians. Um, in fact, I was in, uh, I was in Ireland at the time when he was in the hospital. Um, he, uh, he had investigated that explosion. Anyone who has ever investigated that explosion has died which kind of supports the theory that it was an FSB uh, false flag operation to garner support for just rounding up Chechens. The Chechens, even the innocent ones, the ones that aren't involved in any hostilities or anything else, were still very mistreated by the Russian authorities because the Russian authorities thought that they could uh, demand, of course, information out of them and, the, and the, they, they would submit. So that they the actions of the government against this group has caused uh, a polarization and I think that's why the second war was a little bit more polarized than the first um, just because of the backlash of the government and some of these things I wouldn't have learned had I not actually gone to the Northern Caucasus so. fortunately I missed the, uh, the, the Moscow airport bombing by a couple of weeks so.